This is NBA Action. This week, the Cavaliers are celebrating their surge in the Eastern Conference. While the LA Clippers are trying to make some noise in the West, we'll also take a timeout with Andre Iguodala and share some memories with Paul Pierce. That's probably the cutest I've ever looked. <laughs> Plus, we'll have the top plays of the week. Inside for Delaware with a good looking assist by Allen Iverson. begin by taking you into the action in the Eastern Conference with LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Despite 66 wins and an MVP season from LeBron, the Cavaliers fell short of their ultimate goal in 2009. This year they have a big addition, Shaquille O'Neal, to help put them over the top. This is the first step to hopefully a long beautiful season. I'm dressing all black and I'm ready for war, you know? College. Here is Rondo. Lebron with the rejection. Three way outside by Lebron. How about that shot? After a hot start on opening night, Cleveland was cooled off by their Eastern rivals, the Celtics. So at the screen, opening for Pierce. That's his sweet spot right there. The Cavaliers lost to Boston and continued to struggle in the season's first week. Rose with a beautiful feed for Noah. I told a couple of people, looked them in the face, and I said, hey, we're, we're going to get punched in the mouth to start the season. It ain't going to be pretty. But uh, I'm confident in this group. And, we still have a lot of room to grow. You, you don't want to lose, but sometimes it's not all bad to lose because it helps you get refocused. Williams to James, get out of the way. After a 3-3 three three start, the Cavaliers got untracked and began to pile up the victories. They reeled off three winning streaks of at least five games each. You know, the more and more you're in a relationship, you know, the more and more you figure each other out, you know each other. Either it's going to get worse or it's going to get better. And for our case, we knew it was going to get better just a matter of time, and we stuck with it. What a pass. Mo Williams to Anderson Verizon. I believe the, the, the trust is there. It's there. So every time somebody drives to the best, we know if I get beat, somebody's going to help me. I believe uh, all the work we put together is showing up now. LeBron. That was an incredible play for LeBron. One of the game's premier all-around players, LeBron has become a master in the art of rejection. Changes speed blocked by James. On the give up. Oh, blocked oh. by LeBron James. Get that weak stuff out of here. His willingness, you know, to give up, you know, his body on plays, make big blocks, you know, defensive possession, extra, extra effort plays. You know, he does that. Blocked by LeBron James. He squeezed the air out of it. I think it could be a deflate to certain teams. I mean, especially when they get a run out, they feel like they have a good layup or they have a fast break point, and I'm able to, to erase that. Ellis will take it inside. Belton, chase down number three by 23. Monte Ellis, welcome to the club. LeBron James, out of nowhere. Where he extends and he comes In recent weeks, Cleveland has been almost picture perfect. They've won 12 of 14 to climb near the top of the East. Trying to get it to LeBron, open floor he does. LBJ to Parker, up, go! For the Cavaliers, the goal now is to keep improving and peak at playoff time. Whips it inside of LeBron and a monster right hand jam brings them to their feet here at Izod Center. Um, I think in the long run, this team can be better, um, especially late in the playoffs. We have um, some really good guys, some really good pieces. I think at the end of the day, we can be better. You see this coming up? You see that? I mean, it's cold. You need to put on the jacket. Hey.
Welcome back to NBA Action. Time now to check out some of the news around the league in the latest edition of Instant Replay. We begin in Miami, where the Heat helped to make the holiday season brighter at two local children's hospitals. Dwayne Wade and several teammates dropped by to deliver gifts and good wishes, and their visit lifted the spirits of many young patients. And we're part of a great family in the NBA where this is what it's about. Um, so we, we're just doing our part of what we all want to do in our hearts to come out um, in the communities and, and touch different lives. I think we feel that this is what we should be doing. You know, basketball is great, but giving your time, giving the, giving the kid an opportunity to smile, giving them some words of encouragement. What's up, man? Mm-hmm. Giving them something to look forward to. I mean, something that's, you know, priceless. On the court, Chris Bosh etched his name in the Toronto Raptors record books. While leading his team to a win over the Spurs, the all-star forward hit a landmark basket. Using the screen, peels off of it. Bellinelli finds Bosch. Bosch got it! Chris Bosch is the Raptors' all-time scoring leader, 9,422. The player of the week in the East was Derrick Rose. He averaged 27 points, six assists, and five rebounds, and led the Bulls to three straight wins. That's just confidence right now, just playing with extreme confidence. The Thunder's Kevin Durant earned the honor in the West. Kevin scored 34 per game last week and had a season high against the Nets. Kevin Durant, a thunderous jam, 40 points for Durant. And our snapshot of the week is a moment of celebration for Kobe Bryant, who delivered yet another buzzer beater to lift the Lakers to victory over the Kings. In this week's timeout, we take a closer look at the 76ers' leading scorer, Andre Iguodala. It's time to take a timeout with me, Andre Iguodala. Iguodala teeing up a three, and down it goes. Sixers in flight, Andre with an eye on the goal, and he slams for two. Back to Iguodala, against Sean Marion, a three for the tie, and good. Five point six to go. Game time! My favorite move on court is the double crossover. Iguodala, nice crossover. Iguodala just left Josh Childers with a severe crossover. Iguodala with the crossover, then kicked it, recovered, and scores. Wow, was that a move, huh? I actually do remember my first dunk. I was 15 in that summer. I had my growth spurt. I grew about four or five inches. I went up and dunked, and it was like two of the people in the gym, so nobody was really there. When I went to school that year, everybody, you know, told them I could dunk. They didn't believe me, and then I showed them. My favorite dunk of all time had to be on Yao Ming. But that poster will be coming out soon. One do-over on a shot one time in my career. Probably be a shot against Minnesota Timberwolves. And it was tied up. I took the shot early, kind of with about five seconds to go. Iguodala makes his way to the lane, rises up, in and out. Rebound, Minnesota. Timeout is called. Wow. I can't believe Andre Iguodala left Minnesota with this much time left on the clock. Went in and out and gave him a chance to shoot it. So KG ended up hitting the game winning shot. Barnett against Dallamere for the win. My favorite basketball announcer live call is Smart Zuma. That was a game winner against Memphis. Andre going for the win. There it is. For the win. Yes! Oh, yes! Count it. Give the Sixers the win. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas here in Memphis. That's it. Time's up. We're back with more of NBA action. Now let's go back into the action, this time in the West, where we catch up with the Los Angeles Clippers. After a disappointing season in 2009, the Clippers regrouped 
and came back for this year determined to get better. You win 19 games, it puts a sore spot in, you, in your chest for you know the whole summer and you want to just improve on that and hopefully we can try to do that this year. I can guarantee you we're going to win one 19 games, that's a guarantee I can give you. We had a lot of letdowns last year we, where we had slumps of losing and uh, this year, you know, it's, it's been a new attitude. Uh, our chemistry is a lot better and that's the number one thing. Clippers just owning the paint right now. Right the gap. Oh, what a play! I'm really excited about our team, and the, and the thing I'm most excited about is our depth. You know, we were able to make some acquisitions in the offseason that I think uh, probably made us the, the deepest team since the start of my tenure here. Russell Butler launches up a three. Butler's been deadly off that bench. Well, we're deeper this year. We got a good bench coming off with you know Rasul, Craig Smith, Sebastian, DeAndre, and then obviously Blake's out right now, but when he comes back, that'll be even better for us. Number one draft pick Blake Griffin has been out since training camp with a knee injury, but he's made the most of his time on the sidelines. It's heartbreaking, but at the same time, you gotta use everything and turn it into a positive. So, you know, this gives me a chance to you know work on things that I needed to work on. I can do a lot of ball handling, um, stationary shooting, I can work on upper body strength. Um, you know, before I get back out there, they're going to make sure I'm, I'm completely ready to go. But others have stepped up to carry the Clippers, including center Chris Kamen and second-year star Eric Gordon. You know, he's got that silent assassin look to him. You know, basically, the guy didn't say boo, you know, but all he does is do what you tell him to do and works really hard and can light it up from the three-point line. He can attack the rim. And defensively, he creates a lot of easy buckets off of stops and steals and deflections. Uh, that gets us into the open court. Races in front of Jason Williams to the rim with a left hand. Come on, and a foul! He's kind of quiet, you know. You're trying to get him to speak a little more. Him and Kamen, so, you know, we put them in a, in a speaking group with the guy. Tell you what, he's playing all-star caliber basketball right now. He's not even on the ballot. He's not on the ballot. That's a disrespect, you're right. Yeah, it seems like he has something to prove. He's scoring on the block, right and left hand. He's moving up and down the court a lot faster. and. He's, he seems like he has a chip on his shoulder. Eric Gordon, nice setup for Cayman. I think we're still hungry. We played a lot of good, tough playoff teams earlier in the season, and uh, we're still in it. The role of leader falls to veteran point guard Baron Davis, who's looking to be more consistent in his second season with the Clippers. You know, with Baron, he can either be this like unbelievable player, you know, one day and the next day he was struggling a little bit. You obviously know he's capable of, of having monster games and, you know, I knew he was definitely capable of showing more than what, you know, the one what he did last year and so I'm looking forward to this year. Gordon cut through. They go to Barron. He'll turn and shoot for the win. Oh, there you go! It's two-pronged. One is about, you know, your mental makeup and your ability to communicate with your teammates and to be able to lead that way. But the other way is leading with your game and your, your hustle and your play. That's what we're looking for more from Barron, playing at a high level and uh, being able to lead by example. It's really feel like I got to take it upon myself to be the staple out there for the team and uh, you know just give guys confidence and try and get us to focus on what we have to do out there on the floor to make us a winning ball club. Time now for more of NBA action. This week, we spotlight Celtic star Paul Pierce as he reflects on some of the memorable images from his life and career. Hey, this is Paul Pierce, and this is my life. That's my dream right there. When I was a high school kid uh, playing basketball, dreaming of being in the NBA, you know, I said, hey, if one day I shaved Commissioner Stern's head, then I know I've made it. <laughs> I'm probably wondering how did they call that foul on me? The early years were, were very frustrating. We didn't win too many games, and you can tell by the look on my face. Wow. <laughs> That's probably the cutest I've ever looked. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I look better then than I do now. I have that picture actually in a frame in my house. Makes for a great poster. This is what I call the second coming of the big three. 
The first original Big Three was Bird, Parrish, and McHale. The Big Three, who have now earned that name forever. I think this is probably a big shot I just hit. I am pretty emotional and intense. Here's feeling it. Here's going. I just love playing with passion. You see the emotion of Paul Pierce. My love for the game is something that's always driven me. And all the passion comes out uh, when I'm out there playing. The celebration. <laughs> You know, so many times you, you see every year just teams celebrating in the locker room with the champagne, and, and this is just Kevin grabbing me by the neck and just drenching me. I think he poured the whole bottle on me. I couldn't see for about five or ten minutes, but it was it was very very joyful to be a part of that. Man, that's how you go. That's how you go out with a championship, baby. Here I'm. Um, Raising up my MVP trophy, something I'm very proud of. I've always dreamed of being great. I mean, that's something that pushed me, and uh, it's still pushing me today. And that's why I play the game, to be one of the best players to play. Talk about some of the greatest Celtics that ever played the game, and this is true history right here, when you have legends from the 57 team, you know, standing here on the court. And uh, I think you really feel honored when you see the great players because, you know, you're playing for something bigger than yourself. You're playing for the present. You're playing for the past and, and what they carry. You know, hopefully one day they can hang up my number amongst those guys. Paul Pierce, he's going to be one of the all-time Celtics when he leaves, and you're going to see 34 of the Raptors here. So time, baby. Good, let me play it out, please. Next, we listen in on this week's edition of Sounds of the Game. We need one, just like they need one. So it's probably should be a good battle tonight. You know, I think you grow up as a kid watching these games and one day thinking, you know, that could be you. Uh, uh, yeah. Hey, look how shiny gets his head, look at that. How do you do it? Talk to him. Talk to him. How do you do it? Take it. Happy New Year to everyone. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now it doesn't matter what. Everybody has to be on the board. We got to have everybody on the board. And Hill cleans it up. And a foul. Boy, he may be headed for a monster game the way this is going better now, that's much better. We just got to get on the boards, guys, I'm telling you. Oh, you got to rebound the ball. Just not the big guys, everybody's got to rebound the ball. What a oh. rebound, and he pounds it through. Make your defense work. Get some runs out of your defense, right? Get some runs and miss it. Off the block by Bryant. Bryant, one man to beat. Clemens lets him through. The defense and a dunk. We just got to keep running our stuff. Second and third option. All night long, all right? They don't want to run after you, and they don't want to get picked. Set screens and make hard cuts. Let's go right here. Let's go, let's go. Bayless between defenders explodes right to the cup, and that gets the crowd ignited here. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Bye-bye. Welcome back to NBA Action. Now it's time for the top 10 plays of the week in our courtside countdown. At number 10 is the Knicks' Danilo Gallinari with the emphatic jam. Gets to the rim and throws it down over Hibbert. A strong finish for Gallinari. At nine, the Raptors' DeMar DeRozan takes the alley-oop right off the glass. Jack looking at DeRozan, running to the rim! Oh, DeMar DeRozan! At eight, the Knicks' Nate Robinson with the clutch floater in overtime. Oh, my goodness. An incredible oh, shot by oh, Nate Robinson. Oh, my, my, my. And he gets fouled on the play. At number seven, off the miss, Tyrus Thomas comes flying in to slam it home. Oh, oh, stop it, Tyrus. Tyrus. 
Stop it. Don't do him like that. At 6, LeBron James drives through traffic and delivers a no-look dish. Oh, look away from James. It counts on the foul. There's the play of the game right there. At number 5, it's LeBron's teammate, Delonte West, soaring higher than the Hawks. Oh, oh James, and look at Delonte Can I get West. excited like that? Can I get excited? You can. Oh, my goodness. At four is Miami's Michael Beasley rising high for the putback. Tries to follow. Oh, Michael Beasley. Wow. Hung in the air, waiting for that ball. Oh, my goodness, Steve. Oh. Coming in at number three, it's Manu Ginobili making the plays at both ends of the floor. Manu <laughs> At number two is the Hornets' Chris Paul, putting on a show with this sensational sequence. Oh, in between the legs, are you kidding me? And the ball! You think you've seen everything that he can do? No, you haven't. I'm going to take you, I'm going to use you, I'm going to make the basket. And number one is Kobe Bryant adding to his string of game-winning shots. Kobe will get it for the win. Anybody more clutch than that man? That's our show for this week. I'm Ian Eagle for NBA Action. We'll see you next time.